Hello guys and welcome back to day two of my weekly of my week of build guides really uh, to me an exotic llama uh, bringing you a ball power siphon build today uh, it's a pathfinder and it is crit based um, and basically you just run around you press vol power siphon and it will destroy all of the enemies on your screen and on the next screen um, and just has a really good range, really good uh, coverage with this skill, as in it like, one-shots everything, has a very large area, and you basically just run around throughout the map and, uh, yeah, pick up loot. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it real quick. This build guide is going to be much shorter than the last one, because this build is specifically for mapping. Uh, it doesn't have any prospects of ever killing bosses or getting into higher maps, really. Like, I don't think you could clear... Uh, tier 14 or tier 15 comfortably with this, um, uh, let alone uh, clear any maps that aren't outdoors. Uh, you really need open areas for the skill to be uh, used well. So we are a Pathfinder, and that's mostly because of the uh, attack speed, I mean the movement speed bonus. Uh, so you get 15 move speed here, and then extra flask effect to buff up your Quicksilver. Then you get extra damage here, 10% Ellie pin. Which is really good because it is an elemental based build. Uh, this reduces the Ellie damage you take, gives you some extra flask charges, and uh, right here just makes you immune to ailments which is uh, also fairly useful. Something you no longer have to roll on your flasks. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, then you just come over through the build. Uh, you pick up this life and ranger, heart of oak for life and some stun avoidance. Get this uh, druidic right before because of the flask benefits. Uh, get some life. Come down here for life and mana leech. Uh, I opted to pick up celerity here. Uh, because of the evasion rating, movement speed. Um, evasion rating turns into movement speed in this build. Because we are using Queen of the Forest. Which I will show later. Uh, Primeval Force. Because it's an Ellie build using weapons. Uh, some extra life. Jewel socket. Uh, Heart seeker here. Just the first node in acrobatics. And uh, life, wed, life, vol packs, you know, basic stuff all the way through. I also picked up this uh, just because it's worth it, especially if you are trying to scale the lightning damage of your weapon. Uh, if you don't have a lightning roll, it's probably not worth picking up these two. If you don't have any lightning damage at all, it's probably not worth picking up any of these nodes at all. And just opting for like Ellie damage here, projectile damage here, something like that. And then the rest of the way is just Alchemist for extra flask effect and uh, more life, power charge, because you end up building them up, them up anyway. So uh, let's go over over to the items now. Uh, you've got a wand here, which is it's fairly good. It's like uh, three tier one and uh, one or two extra mods. Um, has a good bit of LEDPS, 270 LEDPS, nine crit chance. It would be a fairly... Uh, pricey wand, maybe three or four exalts probably, uh, towards the beginning of the league. But you're not going to see a ton of people playing Wander, I don't think, uh, so it should be something you can you can reasonably achieve. You can even craft one yourself, just get like two tier one and multi-mod the rest of the way, and it'll be about as effective. Uh, and you're using like Hosoday so that your hits can't be evaded, and it, you don't have to worry about picking up any accuracy on the tree. Uh, Sarkonjas, just because it gives you good life, crit chance, attack speed, like, all of those are good. And it's uh, evasion-based, which Queen of the Forest gives you 1% uh, increase to movement speed per 450 evasion rating. Uh, now that stacks up with things like a Jade Flask. Uh, so this Jade Flask right here becomes absolutely insane. 72% uh, move speed from this. Uh, for reference, an Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline is 110% move speed. So you're basically running, um, like, two Alchemist Quicksilvers of Adrenaline if you're comparing this to any other, like, non-Pathfinder build. Because 70% move speed is about what you'll get from this anyway. Uh, then you've got a Diamond Flask at Ceres Promise, and a Vingtar for lightning damage. That's just, it's a good source of leech. It shocks enemies, which really doesn't happen otherwise, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good pickup. Um, then you've got some basic life gear. Most of this has Ellie, or has uh, wed rolls on it. Uh, that'd be uh, elemental damage with attack skills now. 
um, at zero step because movement speed, life, evasion, and the spell dodge is something that I just love. I seem to overvalue it in most of my builds. And uh, something really important here is Hysteria Crafted Gripped Gloves. Um, they don't have to be gripped gloves if you're just starting a league, but uh, if you can pick them up, it'll be good. And um, that Hysteria mod is Socketed Gems deal 175 to 225 additional fire damage. Uh, now for anyone that knows the added cold or added lightning damage gems, that's worth about uh, yeah, 1.3, 1, 1. 1.5 times as much. Um, so it's basically a five and a half link in your gloves. Uh, so you put in your Vol Power Siphon in there, uh, or you can even put just Kinetic Blast in there for extra clearing. And um, yeah, it, it makes that extra gym really strong. So you have a six link Queen of the Forest and a five and a half link in your gloves, and you're not having to use a two-handed weapon to basically get the effect of two six links. Uh, then I've got some basic jewels, uh, Crit Multi, Life, Proj Damage, and Chill of Corruption which is just to uh, keep the Vol Souls up, because it is a Vol build. Uh, Vol skill build, I suppose. So I've got Vol Power Siphon here, uh, four linked in the gloves. Uh, Vol Power Siphon, increased critical strikes, uh, elemental damage with attacks, and chain, because um, the chain just it, it ends up adding damage to your skill if you're trying to clear large packs. So it's really just the way to go. And then I've got Kinetic Blast set up in the 6-link. Uh, Kinetic Blast uh, with Ellie Focus, GMP, Slower Proj, Elemental Damage with Attacks, and Increased Critical Strikes. Uh, you can switch it for Barrage. If you get the plus 2 Barrage Enchant, or like a Dying Sun, uh, it becomes much better for single target. Uh, but this is generally okay, and this helps you with clearing uh, closed maps, as opposed to open ones, which is... Uh, you know, your Vault Power Siphon's bread and butter. This gives you the other end. Uh, also, for like all boss rooms, uh, they're almost all closed, and you can almost always get a boss close to a wall, which means Kinetic Blast just deals a lot of damage. Uh, then for your Aura setup, you're going to be using uh, Herald of Ice, Herald of Thunder, and a uh, Enlighten with Wrath, so that you can... Enlighten so that you can have some unreserved mana, because I don't pick up any mana reservation nodes on the tree. Uh, otherwise, you would just drop, like, your Herald of Thunder, and you'd pick it back up later. Um, and for either of these Heralds, you can use a Curse. Uh, you can use Curse on Hit, linked with something. I just didn't pick anything. Um, it would probably be Proj Weakness in the end, because it's uh, it's probably the best thing for a Wander. Uh, otherwise, maybe Ellie Weakness, though I think Proj Weakness is going to be better than that. Uh, and then I've got a Flame Golem down here. You can use, uh, and I should use... Blood Rage, actually, because I do have Frenzy Charges checked in here. So I've got Frenzy, Power Charges, uh, no Onslaught or anything, and I'm just checking that the enemy is shocked because it is a crit build with uh, lightning damage, so the shock should apply. Um, but in general, uh, the Vault Power Siphon will do about 50k damage in this setup. Uh, that's 50k per enemy, and Vault Power Siphon specifically hits all enemies within range it will fire a projectile at every single enemy within range. Um, so if the 50k doesn't hit, doesn't kill the enemy at first, uh, well, it'll chain two more times. So if you have a large pack of enemies, they're all going to hit get hit about three times by this skill, which makes it like uh, 150k hits. And that should be more than enough to clear anything up to like, I don't know, tier 13 maybe? Uh rare monster life tier 13 it should be one-shotting pretty much all of the mobs and then you can go through and clear up with uh like clear everything else with your kinetic blast and you'll be good uh you can alternatively use the vol power siphon in the six link and the kinetic blast in the four link and that would just add some extra power uh, but i personally didn't feel like it's worth it because i'm probably just going to be chaining shape strand shape mesa shape primordial pull all the time and you don't really need the extra damage for it, so uh, using it in a 4-link is fine. And single target really becomes the problem with this build, so giving Kinetic Blast a 6-link seemed more valuable. Um, I just want to add uh, that yesterday it was confirmed that Frenzy and Power Charges are not going to be changed, aside from Power Charges losing 10% of their crit, 
going from 50 to 40. Uh, frenzy charges are staying exactly the same in 3.0. Uh, so if you look at something like a frenzy charge here, it becomes really valuable. It's worth 9.3k, as these two nodes are worth about 11k. So um, if you were going to keep leveling this build, it would probably be worth picking up these two frenzy charges. And uh, yeah, I don't know where else to go after that. Probably a jewel socket and... Um, if you're really crazy and trying to push for 100 with this build, well, good luck. But, uh, yeah, you'd probably want some more life because this life is pretty low. About 5.2k. There's no real way to increase it with your gear either. Uh, it's just the downside of being on this right side of the tree. There's not much life anywhere. Uh, you might come over for Hired Killer and get this True Strike Harrier. Uh, it's real nice. Or you could even push up to the Scion Life Wheel if you're a crazy person and you feel like that's worth it. Uh, but I wouldn't suggest doing this build in hardcore. You're probably going to get yourself killed real quick. Um, but it's something fun to, well, as I named it, speed map in uh, run, running like tier 11 shape strands. Because you're running through the map, clearing as fast as you run, and you're going at 240% move speed. Um, or plus 240% move speed, that is. Uh, so yeah, that's Day's build guide. Um, still hesitantly waiting for the patch notes before I'll put up a you know proper build guide on what I've actually decided to play, but um, these are just some ideas I had floating around. Things that looked fun, things I think other people might appreciate learning about. Uh, so yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.